This is going to be Keck Cave's Picnic Day exhibit. Picnic Day is UC Davis annual open house event and uh, we were going to uh, put up a 3D TV in one of the exhibit rooms and we are going to show content, well, just like this one. So what we are looking at here um, is, a, is a globe and I'm make, going to make this transparent for a moment and then I'm going to bring up the outer core. So if I bring this over here, then here we have the globe and here's the outer core. Uh, so everything between here and there is the mantle and everything inside here is the core. This is actually to scale, that's how big it is. Uh, and then I can also bring in a data set of, uh, of global earthquakes. So each of these dots uh, is one earthquake location. These are recorded over the last 110 years. Um, but as it turns out, until about 1960 or so, uh, there wasn't very good coverage due to um, there was no global seismic network. So most of the quakes that you're seeing here um, are from 1960 onwards. And one of the interesting things about uh, this 3D data set is that uh, if you zoom in here you can really tell that these quakes do not happen at the surface but they actually happen deep inside the Earth's interior. What we're looking at here is a, is a so-called subduction zone. These are the Tonga Island chain, so there's a Pacific Ocean over here. Uh, New Zealand is uh, down here. And what happens is that the um, the Pacific plate comes over here from the east and the uh, uh, Australian plate comes over here from the west and the two of them collide and the Pacific plate gets pushed underneath the Australian plate and dives down into the Earth's interior. So all of these little dots that we are seeing here, all of these earthquakes, essentially give us an indication of the location of that former Pacific Ocean floor as it goes into uh, the deep Earth interior and then melts as it goes further down. Um, so these earthquakes are really the only indications of what is going on in the interior of the Earth that we can get. Uh, so a lot of the Earth science research that's done in the department here uh, is based on uh, looking at these distributions of earthquakes. And uh, what I want to do is I want to go over and have a look at um, have a look at the ring of fire, which is this uh, rim of earthquakes that you can see here that goes all the way around the Pacific Ocean here is uh, Alaska here the Aleuts. And then here's uh, Japan, uh, Tonga chain, then you go back down here, uh, and there's Antarctica down here, so you go around, and then there's uh, South America, and you go back up uh, North America in California, where we are is right here. Okay, uh, but back to the, uh, the West Pacific, so here we have, let's see, I'm going to make this non-transparent for a second, so it's easier for me to see. Uh, Here's Japan. I'm going to zoom in and of course there was a big big earthquake just uh, not too long ago so we're going to have a little bit of a look at that. I'm going to make this back transparent and I'm going to take myself inside the globe so you can see it from the from the outside. Uh, here's Japan. There's Hokkaido, Honshu. <laughs> Probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, and if I'm going to I'm going to turn off the global quake set and I'm just going to bring in a smaller set which are quakes that we recorded since March 11. We have been following this. Uh, and so when you look at this here, you can see that there's now um, the, the big event is right here. That's the 9.0 from Friday, March 11. And all this other stuff, um, those are few foreshocks. We're going to see them in a bit. And the rest of them are aftershocks, which have been filling in this general area over here. And you can see that there, if I zoom out a little bit, there's another one of those dark lines which indicates a deep trench in the ocean floor is going down here. So what that means is um, there's another subduction zone where again the Pacific Ocean collides with another plate. It's not exactly clear which one actually. And again the Pacific Ocean loses and gets pushed underneath that other plate causing these earthquakes. Um, if I bring back the global catalog then you can see it a little bit better. If I bring it a little bit sideways uh, you can see now that there's this whole curtain of quakes going down into the interior at about a 45 degree angle. Let me see, I can probably indicate that a little bit. Uh, I apologize, I have a pretty nasty cold. So uh, essentially they are going down along this way uh, deep into the interior. Um, okay, so let me turn off the, uh, the big data set again. And then what I want to do is I want to play back uh, these events over time as they happened. Now I'm upside down, so here we go. Uh, the way I'm doing that is I'm going to first select the, the main event. I brought up this uh, dialog that tells me when that guy actually happened. Um, whoop, missed it. Uh, let's see. There we go. So here we have, let me turn this over. Oops, wrong button. 
so here we have the uh, the 9.0 from from March 11, and then I'm going to bring our um, animation dialog. Okay, and I'm going to set this up just a little bit so we can play this back over time. I'm going to set a speed to something that's convenient so we can see this whole thing, you know, going on. <laughs> And then I'm going to go to the time of the event, and then a few days, uh, a few days earlier. Let's see. Here we go. So we are going to see uh, not just the event itself, but we are also going to see the four shocks. And then let's see. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can really see the whole thing. And then I'm going to play this back. And what's going to happen is that any time one of these earthquakes breaks, it's going to flash up a little bit. So you're going to see how all of these events are, uh, are happening, not in real time, but uh, sped up versus real time quite significantly. Okay, so here we start. And initially there was nothing. And then the first thing that happened is uh, this foreshock right here. So this foreshock was already of a size that nobody expected there to be an even bigger main shock, and that was the main shock. Uh, so now you can see how the main shock triggered all these aftershocks, which are going on here right now. Uh, and these are still going on, and there's actually quite a significant number of large ones in there. This one down here is close to a magnitude 8, uh, and there will, be, uh, there will be more of them. So we are still following this, we are updating this catalog uh, whenever something happens, just to keep an eye on it. The idea is that this general area uh, was under stress, and a lot of the stress was broken by that big event right here. So we are expecting the smaller earthquakes to fill in this entire area. And they're doing that quite nicely. There's a little patch missing right here. So there's probably going to be a few more of those fives and sixes in this general area. Uh, and then those are going to slowly peter out. Uh, but it still is going to go on for a very long time. Now, I have to take everything I said with a grain of salt because I'm not a geologist. Uh, but I pretend to be one on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, what I want to say about that. We are going to show this on Saturday uh, during picnic day on a 3D TV, as I mentioned, uh, and I hope it's going to I hope it's going to be educational and fun. All right.